Precision Flying Tackle. Uh, we are going to talk about two streamers that I use on a, um, a jig hook and one is a Marabou jig streamer. Just three materials, Marabou and laser dub. Um, two different kinds of laser dub. So the first material that we're going to actually deal with, the first thing I want to talk about is Vivas gel spun thread. It is strong. I'm not going to lose it or break it on the, um, uh, the thread itself when I'm wrapping. So I'm going to go ahead and start off. I'm going to advance the fly. We'll start by the eye and start wrapping back just to lock in the thread. That gives me a good basis so it doesn't spin when I start putting these wraps on it with some of the other materials. Just so you know, the hooks that we are going to be using for both flies is the Umqua X-Series XS506. It is probably one of the nicest jig hooks for streamers. And then we are using the Firehole slotted beads, 4.5 millimeter in copper. So we'll be using those for both flies. So we already got that tightened in there. One of the things that most people do um, I'm not going to do it just to save on time, but I would normally hit a little bit of zap a gap or some kind of glue there just so it doesn't turn every time I make a wrap. But I'm going to go up to the middle of the shank and stop. I'm going to take a break, uh, maybe, uh, maybe stare into thin space a little bit. Just joking. I'm literally going to stop there because the way the marabou, which is going to be your tail, it's going to lay back. It's going to lay back because I'm palmering it out and I'm going to face it back and do a technique that I use for a lot of my spay flies and streamers when I'm palmering marabou. So I've already taken the marabou, um, which by the way, this is not anything special marabou. This is just so, uh, your regular strung marabou from Wopsy. Um, you can use different grades. We have, uh, um, we have Nature Spirit, which is really good, the Fish Hunter Marabou. Um, but this is just simple cream Marabou. And I'm going to already tear off this section of Marabou, um, the bottom section, and expose the actual um, core of the feather. And I'm going to tie that in. And I'm going to wrap that up the straight like on the top of the shank of the hook now I do like locking in materials so I'll, I'll lock that in make sure it's tight cut off the excess and then I advance my thread back up here and some guys they like to keep the thread close by well I'm not one of those guys this is, the, this is where most people are like, oh my gosh, I can't use it. Well, this is one of those times where you got to really be nice and gentle to a feather. Treat it with some TLC. Find the tip of the feather, which is right here in the, in the top. Don't grab it up to the top because if you grab it too far up to the top, it's just going to break right off. You need to grab it right where the the tiny fibers meet the longer fibers which is right here i don't know if you can see that or not but it's right there and then we're going to start wrapping now our first wrap is one of the most important wraps because if the feathers aren't laying properly they're going to get all stuck behind everything and they're going to be all which way now the second wrap i'm not going to do the the technique that i normally do um, you would lick your fingers and just caress the plumes back like that. So it stacks behind or in front of the other plumes. And what that does is keep them from getting trapped every rep. Now, easy way to doing this that I've found is just get a little cup of water so you can dab your fingers every rep. And then that way you're getting even turns all the way up. Now, as you can tell, it's puffing out like this now. When it's in the water, 
the way it's going to lay, it's going to lay right back the shank of the hook and it's going to cause a wonderful tail and it's going to move and not get tangled up around the hook because it's evenly wrapped around, wrapped around the hook to displace an even profile. Now I just tied off the end there. I'm going to stop there. So this is going to cause an effect that most people they look at it and they're like, "Oh, well, I can just shove that back there." That I'm sometimes I don't care. I mean, it it, it is marabou, but one side's going to look thicker than the other side. I am not that I'm a perfectionist at all. I just like to cut that top part out just so I can then wrap and secure the rest of that fluff of marabou back and that's where i'm going to stop and i'm just going to make some really securing wraps so that stuff is secure good now that is the profile of the body right there i don't in the water that will stay like that and it breathes it gives it movement that's what a minnow looks like it, it just has so much movement in the water now, the two colors that I'm using, one is light olive, and again, this is Senyo's laser dub, not laser hair, and then the other one is, uh, this one's brown. So, I, I do a trio effect, so think of how a minnow is lighter on the bottom of the fly and darker on the top, that's pretty much what we're going to do here, except... We have to tie in sections of this marab this uh, yeah, marabou, this dubbing, one on that side, one on that side, one on that side, and then the light we're going to do on the top. So how I prep my dubbing, I pull it apart. I get these little patches. And all I'm doing is just pulling the fibers out. So that way they look even. And that's... I have to do less brushing and less shaping of the fly. But I'm going to start with tying the top in first. Because the top is always the hardest. And I'm going to do a pinch effect. I'm going to pinch down. And I'm not going to do a heavy wrap. I'm just going to stop at two little securing wraps there. And you want to make these as even as possible. So that one was pretty thick. I'm going to make that another thick one. For the side, lay that down as well. And then I'm going to do the same effect, pinch, pinch wrap. And sometimes they get moved around, so that's why I only do two wraps there. So that way I can secure it. And then the last one on this side, I'm going to do the same exact thing. Make sure I got the same consistency, thickness, because I don't want it to look like an oddball shape. Pinch wrap. Now the last, the last total one is going to be the light olive. Again, this is your bottom. And you're going to do the same. Now sometimes with senior laser, they're longer fibers. So what I end up doing is breaking them. I just broke a couple of them just so I didn't have this humongous mustache of, uh, of Senyo fibers in here, but. Same thing, I'm gonna wrap that secure now that i got them secure i'm gonna space them out evenly because i want to advance the hook without trapping any of my fibers i want to advance it almost to the bead 
Now what this does, this gives me some room to play with the, the actual look. And if you, if you trap all your fibers in ahead of time, I mean, that looks like an awesome haircut day right there. Um, stellar look right there. Probably fish this and catch like a thousand fish on one cast. But once you get to the bead like that, you just kind of sp spread the Red Sea there. Pop it down and you're going to start making a thread dam. Now that gives you the full streamer look. And what I have right next to me is a brush. I'm going to brush this out at the end. Now some guys, what they do at the end, they'll take a little bit of dubbing and just dub the thread just so it hides it for their own eyes, you know, whatever. I, I, I tie fish, I tie flies to catch fish, not for my own eyes to look at. And then when I did that whip finish, it literally wrapped that right underneath and secured it so tight. I didn't have to worry about it. Now, this is the, we're, we're literally 99% done. This is the last part of the entire thing. The brushing job. You know you did a if you did a good job securing it, not all your dubbing comes out on the brush. So the a lot of these brushes have like this is a Dr. Slick brush. It has the little micro um, breasts right here, and then there's another Velcro size, and that's I call it a gun cleaner, but that's kind of like the wire brush. I like using the sometimes the small the smaller velcro just to get into those fibers to push it back. And when I'm done with this streamer, it's not going to look like 100% perfection um, until I put it in the water. And when I put it in the water, it's going to come alive. And as you can tell, as I pulled this back, look at that profile I'm getting. Exactly what 90% of your bait fish look like. You can use this streamer tactic with a Euro rig. You can use this with a um, just a regular streamer rod or any kind of, you know, four weight, five weight, six weight rod. Um, you know, if you're Euro nymphing, this is great to just jig around. But this is a simple, simple step pattern to use. It will up your game on streamers uh, with a Euro rig. It will also up your game when it's tough to get the fly deep enough. Because with the with a lot of this, you know, a lot of the other new flies that are coming out with, they have so much material. You don't have a heavy enough bead or heavy enough um, lead eyes to get the whole fly down deep enough. So you have to use a sinking line. This does not need a sinking line to get down deep because it has a 4.5 millimeter tungsten bead on it. So again, a marabou jig streamer, really easy to tie. Thanks for joining. Me.